All right, good. All right, so let's begin with our feet hip distance apart. Um, we're gonna begin just with our normal arm circles, just to get our body a little bit warmed up. So extend the arms and just little circles. And just really kind of noticing the shoulder girdle and the shoulder joint. I'm just gonna bring myself up a little higher here and inviting a little bit of movement through the upper body. I'm gonna soften through the knees. And just create our little circles here. Good. And then reverse our circles in the opposite direction. Just feel it coming right from the joint here. I just taught a cycling class uh, about a half an hour ago, and for the life of me, I could not get the audio on, so I taught the class completely blind. I didn't know what the music was. I couldn't hear the music. <laughs> I couldn't um, see or hear anything, so it was uh, quite an interesting thing, so that was really, um, I'm glad I got the audio back on for this class. <laughs> All right, now extend the arms up overhead, reach the body, press the feet into the floor, extend the upper body. Give yourself a little bit of stretch here through the upper body and the lower body. Guide the left wrist over to the right side. Open up through the left side, press down through the left hip so that you can really feel that side opening here. Inhale, come back through center over to the other side. Guide the right wrist over to the left. You're just giving it a gentle tug, so you're not pulling. You're just guiding it. Come back through center one more time on other side. Exhale, reach over. Give your side body a nice little stretch. And then inhale back through center over to the other side. Good. Come back through center. Extend the arms out long. Swim the hands behind you. Intertwine the fingers. Press the hands down and away. And guide the hands a little bit away from the body. Knees are going to be slightly bent. And I just want you to think about lifting through the sternum here without arching into the low back, but rather finding a little bit of length. Glide the shoulder blades down and open up through the chest. Good, swim the hands forward, intertwine the fingers, press the hands away. Drop the chin down to the chest just to give your back of the neck a nice little stretch here. And then extend the arms, bring the hands up overhead. Feet are gonna come about hip distance apart. We're gonna go down into our, our squats. So press down and then back up down and then up. So I'm gonna show you a little side view. As you're coming down, you wanna shift your weight into your heels. Make sure your knees are not coming over your toes. You're gonna keep your upper body nice and lengthened so we're not collapsing forward, but we're really nice and long and strong through the back. Down and then back up. As you press into your heels, you're gently squeezing through the glutes as you come up drawing the quad up towards your pelvis. And then up, we got five more. Good. And last one, and down. Good, keep your hands up overhead. We're gonna go into some pulsing squats just to give our quads a little bit more warmth. Come down into your squat. Press into your heels and then pulse. Little, little pulses here. And we got 10 seconds left. So you're not bouncing, but you're rather just lifting and lowering, pressing into the floor for four, three, two, one, and extend the body. Beautiful, take a deep breath in, extend the arms up overhead. Exhale, release the hands down to the side. One more time, inhale. And exhale, release. Great job, perfect. All right, we're gonna start um, with some light weights. We're gonna go into a sumo squat with a front raise. So weight doesn't have to be too, too heavy. You can use water bottles if you don't have any weights at home. 45 seconds, then we transition to the next exercise. So we're gonna have a, like a 
less than a 10 second transition time. I've been kind of going through these fairly quickly. So we really keep the tempo going. So let's grab hold of our weights. If you don't have any weights, no big deal. So extend the legs out long. Toes are gonna be reaching to the edges of your mat. Heels are gonna be drawn in. Palms are gonna be facing each other and the weights are gonna be in front of you. As you come down, you're gonna open up and extend the arms to about shoulder height and then down. And, and then up, sorry, down and then up. Here we go. Down and then up. Down and then up. Good. And when you're coming down, think about keeping the upper body nice and lengthened. You're reaching and opening up the inner thighs. That's the trick. So the work as you come up, you're pressing into the floor. You're also drawing up through the quads, drawing up through the glutes, and you're definitely giving your inner thighs a little stretch here. Good, you got 12 seconds left. Keep going. And five, and four, and three, and two, and one, down, and then back up. Good job, beautiful, shake it off. Excellent. Whew. All right, so elbows come up. Arnold presses. Feet are always about hip distance apart with a little micro bend in the knee. So we're not locking the knee, we just have a little bend. Feet are hip distance apart, elbows are tucked in. We're gonna exhale to lift, inhale lower. Lift and lower, lift and lower. Good, so what we're gonna do is we're either gonna hold this pace, if this is working for you, or in about 10 seconds, we're gonna go double time. So we're gonna pick up the pace just a little, to add a little more tempo, a little more challenge to the breath. In five, four, three, two, one, and double time. Lower, lift, lift, lower. Keep going. And 10. Good, good, good. Keep going. You got it. And five, four, three, two, and one. Extend the arms, rest them out to the sides, shake it off. Ooh, I feel that right through my shoulders and my biceps. Alrighty, come down, feet hip distance apart again. We're gonna bend down into a squat. So you're gonna lengthen through the back of the tailbone, right down up to the top of the head. So your neck is not leaning forward, but your neck is really stacked up right onto the spine. Your tailbone is slightly tucked under and your feet are planted into the floor. Arms are gonna be outstretched. We're gonna keep them at our sides as we come down and then up into our squat. Down and then up. Good. We're gonna do about 20 seconds of these and then we're gonna add in a little movement with the upper body. Again, think about coming back through the heels. Let the weight of the body rest into the feet. Now you're gonna come down, squat, lift, lower, lift, down, lift, lower, lift, down, lift, lower, lift, down, lift, lower, lift, down, good, lift, lower, lift, and down, lower, lift, and down, good, four more, starting to feel our quads getting nice and warm here, good, now remember, I can't encourage you guys enough to take a break if you feel you need to just Sit out for a few seconds. Listen to your body. Good, last one. Good job, beautiful. Shake it off. So I can't see your bodies at home. I can't see where your um, placement is. So please honor that if you need a little break, we take it. Okay, 
bicep curls. We're gonna go into straight up bicep curls. Feet are hip distance apart. We come up and we come down. Up and then down. 45 seconds. Nice job. So breathing, where do we breathe here? Always on the heavy movement. So as you're lifting, you exhale. As you inhale, you release the weight down towards and away from your body. So you exhale, lift, inhale, lower. Exhale, lift, inhale, lower. Good. Keep going. Excellent. And last one. Good. And rest the arms down to your sides. You're going to hold your weights like a coffee cup. Palms are going to face the outer part of your thighs. You're going to keep the shoulders rolled back. We're going to go into hammer curls and down, up, and then down. So now you're working the biceps again. Just it feels a little different. <clears throat> it might feel a little lighter. You're working the a different part of the bicep. So there's two muscles. Good, and keep going. Beautiful. So we wanna stay pulled up through the abdominals as well so that you're really active through the abs and you're keeping your torso nice and supported. Down and lift and lower, good job. Good, keep going. We have another 10 more seconds to go. Good, in five, four, three, two, and one. Rest the arms, good. You can take the weights and you can place them off to the side if you don't wanna use any weights. We're gonna go into some lunges now. So if you wanna have some weights, you want a little extra intensity, by all means, keep the weights in your hands. I'm gonna set them off to the side. So we're gonna do some lunges now. We're gonna do reverse lunges with a knee drop to a knee lift to a front uh, standing position. So feet are hip distance apart. We come back with the right foot. We establish that base, we drop, we lift, we bring it back. Back, drop, lift, back. Here we go. So balance could be challenged here. I'm having a little bit of a tempo as I go through these reverse lunges. But if that's not working for you, I want you to establish your own rhythm here. So maybe find your base, set up, come back. Set your base, lower, lift, and back. And if you feel wibbly wobbly once in a while, that's okay, too. <laughs> and back. <laughs> And back. And keep going, we've got 10 seconds left. And back, and last one. And back, good, we're gonna reverse the other side. Left leg is gonna come back. Reestablish your base at the front of your mat. Kick it back, lower lift and back. So you'll notice that it's my back knee that's bending down. The front knee is almost stuck in space. It's a little hinge in the knee, but it's the, really the back leg that's doing the work here while the front leg is stabilizing. But you're really trying to challenge that back leg. Feeling a little activation through the glute on the right side. Good. We got about 12 seconds left. Good, keep going. And last one. And back, good job, shake it off, well done. Woo! Okay, so grab some water, do whatever you need to do. Um, we're gonna do some Romanian deadlifts next. 
So we're gonna take two weights, we're gonna work the back glutes and the hamstrings on this next round. So back is nice and long. Torso is pulled up away from the pelvis. So you're really nice and tall and long. Shoulders are drawn slightly back and you're really feeling like you're nice and strong through the shoulders so that they're not rounding forward. Feet are gonna be about hip distance apart. Weights are gonna be in front of you as you come down. You're gonna lengthen the back. You're gonna come down into this tabletop position. So you'll see my back is nice and long. You're gonna row it in towards your belly, down, then lift. Now when you lift, the targets, the glutes and the hamstrings, okay? So in three, two, one, let's go. Lower, row, down, and lift, down. Row, lower, and lift, keep going. Now, if you have back issues here and coming down and forward and that doesn't work for you, bend the knee. Maybe that offers a little bit of support or a little less intensity through the back. So feel free to bend the knee. Feel free to avoid doing this if this doesn't work for you. Maybe go into some squats instead. Good, we've got six seconds left. Back, good. And back, and we're done, last one. And back, well done, beautiful. All right, tricep kickbacks. So we're gonna keep the feet hip distance apart, knees are gonna be bent, hinge from the hips, lengthen through the back of the head down to the tailbone. Elbows tuck in at the sides, and then we kick it back. So feel free to adjust your resistance here. You wanna go a little heavier, by all means, go ahead. Good. So we don't lock the elbow. I want you just to feel like you're extending your arms, but you're really drawing the muscular focus to the tricep, so the top of the back of the arm, right above the elbow, between the elbow and the shoulder. Keep going, we're almost there. We got about 10 seconds left. And then three, two, and one. Good, press the feet into the floor, extend the arms, extend the body, shake out the legs. We're gonna do tricep pulses next. So the palms, you can maybe using the same weights depending on how it'll feel. You can adjust, of course. Gonna come down into that bent knee position, hinge forward. Palms this time are gonna face up to the sky. Your back is long, your belly's pulled in. That's key to protect your low back. Now we're gonna pulse and lower, pulse and lower. Now in about 25 seconds, we're gonna double time it. So we're gonna pick up the pace. Good, in five, four, three, two, one, and double time it. Pulse, 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 keep going. Pick up that pace, you got it. 10 seconds left. In six, five, four, three, two, one, and rest. Good job, well done. Ha, shake that off, beautiful. All right, so we're gonna finish off with some shoulder presses. And then we're gonna come down to the floor and do a little bit of ab work. So bring the hands up to 90 degrees. So you wanna have goalpost arms here. Couple things you wanna watch for. We're not arching through the low back. So there's no lifting and pushing back through the low belly, uh, through, the, through the glutes. You're really keeping your torso nice and supported here. Now we're gonna come up and then down. Now you're gonna come back to that 90 degree angle in the elbow. Squeeze, open, press, down, Squeeze, open, press, down, squeeze, open, press, keep going. Now, as much as I know our arms are just bringing in the elbows into as we squeeze, I want you to focus on 
squeezing the chest. So really draw that awareness to the chest here. Good, keep going. Good, we got 12 seconds left. And press, and press, squeeze. Good, nice job. Last three, two, and one. Good, rest the arms. Place the weights next to you. You're gonna come down to the floor. Grab some water, I'm just gonna adjust the camera so they can see down a little bit towards the floor. All right. Well, that's too much. Okay. So lying down on your back with your knees bent. You're gonna grab hold of your weights. We're gonna do one more exercise just to activate through the chest and give a little chest press here. So I'm sorry, this is just a little crooked. And just here. All right, so knees are gonna be wide, um, about hip distance apart, and arms are gonna be outstretched to the side. With your weights in your hands, we're gonna go into our chest presses with the knees bent. But first, we're gonna come up into a bridge. So we're gonna exhale to tilt the pelvis down and then lift the upper body. So first, you want to keep this nice long line. You want your abs to be turned on and you want to be able to feel like the weight of your body is in through the shoulders. Now in the event, this is not working for you, come down and you'll do your chest presses from down on the floor, okay? So if you want to come into your bend, into your bridge, arms are gonna be outstretched in front of you. As you inhale, you bend the elbows, you hover them over the mat, exhale, press, inhale. Press, inhale, press, good. Good, lift up. Now don't lose that connection in the front body. Keep the front body nice and wide and open. If you notice your heels or your feet, I should say, are rolling out to the edges of the foot, press the heel down into the floor. Imagine you're holding a ball between your knees. So you're trying to bring the inner thighs slightly together, almost not really trying to bring them together, but figuratively speaking, you're drawing them together. Good, keep going for five, four, three, two, and one. Good, rest the weights down onto the floor, then articulate down vertebrae by vertebrae, come down onto the floor. Good, now I asked you to grab something maybe like a ball or a pillow or something that you can place right between the knees. So just something that you can get some tactile information. And I want you to gently, whatever it is you're squeezing up, in the event you don't have anything available, don't worry about it, don't stress about it. Just begin to bring some awareness to the inner thighs. Feet are gonna come a little closer in towards your glutes, heels towards your bum. Press the hands down to the floor. You're gonna exhale, peel the spine up, reach up, hold here. Now you're gonna come halfway down and exhale, lift. Down and lift. Again, remembering, drawing a little awareness to the inner thigh so you're bringing a little bit of that gentle squeeze into the ball or whatever it is you have beneath or in, in between your knees. You're coming halfway down, you're squeezing back up. So you're inhaling, lowering, exhale, lift. Use your breath here. Good, remember if you need a break, we take it. You shouldn't feel any pain here. So if you are feeling discomfort in the low back, pull up through the abdominals, keep the abs nice and turned on here, or rest for a moment. Good, five, four, three, two, and one, lift up into your bridge. Slowly come back down to the floor. Take the ball or whatever you had, place it to the side. Knees are gonna remain bent. Bring the hands behind the head. Open up through the elbows if that feels comfortable. You can frame the face if it feels better to reach your elbows up to the sky. Inhale, lengthen the back of the neck. Exhale, 
reach up, peel your, your shoulder blades up off the ground and down and lift and down. So the trick here is the pulling is coming up from the abdominals. The head is resting into the hands. There's no work through the neck. That's the trick. A lot of times you see people straining with their neck to get up. That's not where the muscular focus is on. The muscular focus is on the low abs. So really allow your head to rest into your hands. Allow the head to feel heavy. Allow the pull to come in from your abdominals. Good, and last two, last one. Now come up into your forward flex position. Hold this position. Bring your right foot up to tabletop. Lower your right foot. Bring your left foot up to tabletop. Bring it down and right. And lower and left. And lower. Hold it here. And lower. Keep going. Good. Last one. You're going to notice that the opposite part of your torso so you're working you're lifting the right leg the left oblique is working as you lift the left the right oblique is working to stabilize last two last one good rest the head down to the floor beautiful bring your left knee in towards your chest extend your right leg long Hover the right leg up off the ground so it's not resting there. It's actively reaching through the heel. Bring the left knee in towards your heart. Feel a little stretch through the back of the glutes. And then bring the right knee in. Extend the left leg long. And then switch. And switch. And switch. And switch. Now next one, you're going to come up. Bring the left knee in towards the chest. Bring your upper body into that gentle forward flex position and switch. Bring the knee in towards the heart and switch and switch and switch. Good. Keep going. Soften the throat. Now, if your neck is hurting, bring the hand behind the head or rest the head down on the floor for a second. Come back up. Good. And 10. We're going to double time this. We're going to pick up a little pace. And nine and eight and seven, and six, and five, and four, and three, and two, and one, and bring both knees in and rest down towards the floor. Oh, nice job. Good, knees are gonna stay bent. So we're gonna take the left arm, rest it right behind the head. The right hand is gonna, place itself down onto the floor. We're gonna inhale to lengthen the back of the neck. Exhale, come up into a gentle flex position. So you're feeling nice and supported through the pelvis. What you don't wanna do is bring, bring down the low back onto the floor. You wanna keep your pelvis nice and aligned and you wanna draw in through the low belly so that you can protect the low back. Right arm is gonna extend out long. You're gonna stay in this forward flex position as you reach towards your right heel, back through center, reach, center, reach, center, keep going. Now, if your right hip is just wanting to come up and meet you, you wanna glue your hips to the floor so that you're not moving through the pelvis. That's the key here, so that the back is not doing any work, but rather the obliques are doing the work. The chin is slightly lifted rather than the chin coming into the chest. So there's that nice connection that you're lifting up and you're not really flexing and using the neck. Keep going for five and four and three and two, and one. Stay in that flex position. Rest the hand, right hand now behind the neck, behind the head. If you need a little break, take it, and then come back into it. Stay forward, reach with the left, and center, left. Same with your breathing pattern here. 
This time, as you exhale to reach, you inhale to come back through center. So there's really this nice sense of breathing pattern here. So make sure you're using your breath to your advantage. We got 10 and nine and eight and seven and six, five, four, three, two, and one. Well done. Come back through center. Bring your knees in towards your chest. Give yourself a little stretch here. Good. All right. Let's come on to our tabletop position. So all fours, and we're going to go into our plank position. I'm going to give you a few options for plank, depending on what intensity level you want today. First option will be, of course, a forearm plank. So with your forearms down onto the mat, shoulder distance apart. So I always like to start with genie arms and then open up my arms so that I have that nice shoulder to elbow alignment. I'm gonna come down. That could be your first plank, legs are extended. Second option, push up plank. It's gonna feel a little bit heavier. Your body will come up and lengthen and you'll hold here. The other option is to do some shoulder touches as you're in your push-up plank. So choose whatever variation works best for you. I'm just gonna go into a forearm plank. So you come with me or do what you want. In four, three, two, one, let's go. 45 second plank, hold it here. Now, if you notice your bum is lifted, bring it down. If you feel like your low back is arching, draw your belly in towards your spine. Press your elbows into the floor. Really keep your shoulders nice and supported here. If your elbows are out of alignment with your shoulders, shift your weight slightly forward. Keep your head stacked onto your spine. What I mean by that is don't let your head fall forward. Really keep the neck nicely aligned. Good, we've got five, four, three, two, and one. Beautiful. Rest back onto your heels, into child's pose. Extend the arms out long. Give your low back a nice little stretch. <sighs> and then we're done. Let's come up. We're gonna start again. Grab your water, grab whatever you need. And we're gonna do this whole set all over again. So make any adjustments. Um, I always encourage for the second round, if there's an area of weights or something that you can change to add a little bit more intensity, this is the time to do it. So if you want to add a little bit of weight to something, go ahead and do it. Sorry, I gotta adjust the camera again. All right, so we're gonna start off with our sumo squats with our front raises. So bringing the weights in front of you, opening up wide through your legs. So begin to establish that front, that nice base beneath you. Feet are, toes are out, heels are in. As you exhale, you bend the knees and reach and lift. Good. Lower. Good. So remember to draw the inner thighs up and in. Press down through the feet. Pull the belly in. If you need a break, take it. Take five seconds and then get back into it. You got it. Last three, two, and one. Good. Toe heel the feet back. Find center here. Whew. All right. Slightly bend the knee. So that's where we always want to start with a nicely bent knee. 
You're gonna bring the elbows up to frame the front. As we exhale, we press up. Inhale, lower. Lift and lower. And lower. Lift and lower. We're halfway. And if your arms are getting a little tired, feel free to alternate sides. Give yourself a little option to give a micro rest at the other end or the other side of the arm. So just always find an option that works best for you. Five, four, three, two, and one. Rest the arms to the side. Great job. Good, we're gonna hinge, bend the knees. Lengthen through the back. Good, now we're going to keep our elbows tucked into the side and we're going to kick it back and back and back. I might be going a little out of sequence here, so I apologize for that. Lift the head up onto the spine and kick it back. Use those triceps. And go. Keep going, you got it. Good, we got 10 seconds left. Good, and five, four, three, two, and one. Good, lengthen the body. Good, we're gonna go into our bicep curls. Palms are gonna face forward, roll the shoulder blades back. Bend the knees slightly. Lift up through the belly, and here we go. Same thing here, so if you want a little break, alternate the hands. So alternate both arms. Good. We're about 15 seconds and we got 30 to go. Nice job, you got it, keep going. Beautiful, we're almost there, last 15. Good, find your rhythm here, you've got it, we're almost there. I'm gonna take a little break from the biceps in five, four, Three, two, one, come back. So I know we did our back-to-back -back biceps on the last round. We're gonna actually go back into our triceps here and do our pulses. So knees come back into that bent position, roll the shoulder blades back, hinge from the hips, lengthen, stack the spine, the head right on top of the spine. Palms are gonna face up to the sky and pulse, pulse. So double time, halfway through. Good, about 15 seconds and 10 to go, then we're gonna double time for 20 seconds. And here we go, and double time. Pulse, pulse, pulse. Nice job. Keep going, we've got seven seconds left. Five, four, three, two and one good extend the body Whew. stretch out the shoulders nice job here guys well done all right feet stay hip distance apart palms are going to face the side <clears throat> you're going to hold your weights like a coffee cup we're doing our hammer curls if you need to adjust your resistance and go up a little bit go ahead and do so <clears throat> all right in three two one here we go Nice job. Well done. I hope you guys got a chance to enjoy the sun a little bit yesterday. It was nice and refreshing to see the sun out. Felt really good. Good, keep going. 
Nice job. We got 12 seconds left. We're almost there. In five, four, three, two, and one. Good. Now you can either keep your weights at your side or you can release them. The first round, I didn't do any weights for my reverse lunges. I'm going to do some weights this time. So starting at the top of your mat, anchor in through your left foot. You're going to kick back the right foot. You're going to drop the knee. You're going to lift the knee, bring it back to base and back. Lower, lift, and up. Find your own pace here. Remember, if you're working against balance, find your balance first, lower your knee, lift, and back. If your front knee, this is the trick, has to stay stacked on top of the ankle, there's a tendency sometimes to bring the left or the knee over the toes. I'm going to give you a little example like this. That's not where I want you to be. I want your ankle and your knee to be aligned. Keep going. And the reason is because we want to protect our knees. Good. Last one. And back and lower and lift and base. Nice job. Good. Other side. Kicking back with the left foot this time. So back, lower, lift, and come back to center. The trick sometimes is also to recognize that one side might feel a little bit more wobbly than the other. Don't stress about it. Don't judge it. Just acknowledge we all have it, all of us. There's not a human on the planet that doesn't have one side that might feel a little less stable than the other. Keep going. Well, maybe there is a human, I don't know, but <laughs> everybody feels a little wibbly wobbly sometimes. And lift and back. Lower, lift and back. Almost there. Back, keep going. Good, last one. Lower, lift, and back. Good job, shake it off. Good, let's do our military presses, our scarecrows, to our chest squeezes. And then we'll finish off with our Romanian deadlifts, then we'll come down to the floor. So, open up, elbows aligned with the shoulders. You're gonna exhale to press. Inhale, lower, squeeze, open. Press, open, squeeze. Watch where is your rib cage here? Is your rib cage popping out? Can you drop your rib cage down so that you're not extending the upper spine? These are all things that we do, maybe not even realizing it. So it's really important to draw that awareness to the different parts of the body. Just recognize where's your body moving in space. Good, and last five. Four, three, two, and one. Good, rest the hands down. We're gonna come into our Romanian deadlifts with our rows. Feet are gonna be hip distance apart, lengthen through the spine. Arms are facing forward. Hinge forward, keep the belly pulled in, back is long, come down, bring the weights up to your belly button, down, and now lift up, feel that squeeze right from the hamstrings and the glutes, and down, belly pulls in, row, lower, lift, lower, row, lower, lift, come down. Nice job. Beautiful. So somebody once asked me, how is this not a back exercise? How do you not go into your low back here? Well, part of it is emphasis on the muscular focus here. Drawing awareness to where are we working here? You're working the glutes and the hamstrings. 
you're pulling up through the belly so that you're not using your black your back you're keeping your belly protect your back protected by drawing in your abdominals sometimes awareness of where the work should be coming from is what can draw some areas of the body to work good last one i know we went over time i think and up good job feet stay planted bend your knees come into a squat and press up and down up down and up at first especially when you do romanian deadlifts and if you have a weaker core then you'll feel it in your back because your back wants to help so strengthening the core is going to help that also in general if there's any back pain strengthening your core is going to help that good keep going we got five seconds left that we're going to come down lift and then lower and lengthen here we go down lift lower lengthen down lift lower lengthen down lower lengthen good job lengthen great job let's finish four more i know we're almost there good job keep going and last one and lower good job fantastic well done everyone good let's come down to the floor i don't remember did we do our i think we did our scarecrows let's come down so bring your weights with you feet are going to be bent knees are going to be bent feet hip distance apart okay all right we're going to begin with our shoulder chest presses knees are bent you can do this in your bridge you can do this with your back flat on the floor i'm going to go up a little bit on resistance feet remain hip distance apart feet are anchored into the floor elbows are wide exhale pull the belly in peel the spine off the ground if you are going into your bridge you're not just rest the legs or the knees the the back of the your back on the floor place the feet flat and exhale lift and lower don't let the elbows touch the ground so there's this constant effort there's no rest here soften the throat let the weight of your body rest on the shoulder blades and on the shoulders widen through the clavicles as you come down exhale press up keep your torso lifted very very nice front body opener especially for those of us who are sitting at computers for extended periods of time you want to open the front body good and last two last one now bring your weights to the side and let them rest down beside you you're going to stay lifted and then begin to articulate down upper back mid back low back rest your pelvis rest the hands on the floor palms are down exhale tilt the pelvis towards the floor peel yourself up come up into that bridge position and then back down and then up and down good last one and up and down beautiful reach for your pillow your ball something you can squeeze if you have it available otherwise just visualize something between your knees that you want to squeeze exhale peel up soften your shoulders come halfway down and lift and lower so work the abs as you come down to control yourself coming down work the glutes and the abs as you press to lift your torso up to the sky nice and active on both sides glutes are working the whole time 
and you're really using your abs too. So protect your low back by drawing the abs in. Drop the rib cage. And we got 10 seconds left. I just lost my ball, but I'm gonna continue going. I wasn't squeezing it, see? I lost the ball. Good, in three, two, one. Come all the way down. Ooh, and bring the knees in towards the chest. Lengthen the low back and rock your body side to side. Maybe even create some circles with the knees. Oh, all right, great job. Let's bring the feet down onto the floor. Knees are gonna stay bent. Hands are gonna come behind the head. You can frame the head with your elbows. You can open up through the chest. Inhale to lengthen the back of the neck. Exhale to peel up. Inhale to lower. Exhale, lift and lower. So just notice where's your low back here? Are you squeezing through your glutes to lift up? Can you let your bum not do anything here? Are you feeling like the neck is working to lift you into this forward flex position? Or can you feel your body your belly button pulling you in by using your low abs your transverse abdominis that's that corset muscle that runs all the way around the front and the back of your pelvic area pelvis like the low belly area and keep going for five and four and three and two and one good job Rest down, bring the right knee into the chest, extend the left leg. Extend the right leg, bring the left knee in. And switch, and switch. So gently draw the knee in towards the heart. Make sure that your legs, if they're going down to the ground and you feel this arching in the low back, go higher on the legs. Good, and last one, bring the left knee into the chest. Give it a hug. Gently flex forward, pull up through the abs, and switch, and switch, switch. Keep going, keep going, go. And draw it in. Soften through the neck. I know you might be feeling this a little bit through the neck. If you are, maybe bring one hand behind the head. Keep going for five and four, three, two, and one. Bring the knees in, rest the head. Oh, good job. Place the feet down onto the floor just for a moment here. We're gonna do one little variation of an exercise and then we'll come and do our side work. So bring your hands behind the head. I want you to inhale here, and then as you exhale, draw your belly in and up while you drop your rib cage down. So there's like this locking sensation, rib cage are pulled down, belly's pulled in. You're gonna exhale to lift the upper body, hold here, bring your right foot up, hold this position, lower your right, then bring your left, and lower, and right, and lower, you're marching here. So working oppositional sensation, you lift your right, you're working the left oblique, opposite, left to right. Now, you're gonna bring your left foot up to tabletop. Meet your left foot with your right. Stay in this upward flex position. You're gonna lower both feet down to the floor. And then exhale to lift. Bend the knees, bring the knees to the forehead, come back to tabletop, lower the feet, lift the feet, bend the knees, come into a forward flex, tabletop, lower, lift, bend, in, tabletop, lower, we got four more, lift, bend, in, cocoon, tabletop, lower, lift, Bend, cocoon, good. Tabletop, lower, lift, bend, 
tabletop. If you are feeling this in your low back, don't drop your toes down to the ground. That's very, very important. Last one. Lower, lift, bend in, and rest down to the floor. Great job. So I'll tell you, that's the key, is if your low back is arching, it wants to come to the body and you're no longer using just your abs there. Now, left hand behind the head, come up into that forward flex position, knees remain bent. Come down with your right arm, palm facing the earth. Exhale, side, back to center, and center. Watch your pelvis. I just noticed my right hip wanted to come up. I could feel it. <laughs> so the deeper you are in this forward flexion, the more you're gonna start feeling it through the obliques. And keep going for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, Three, two, one. Good. Switch arms. Come behind the head with the right hand. Left arm reaches out. Forward flex. Chin is lifted. And reach. And reach. Remember, take a break if you need it. But then come right back in. You've got this. I have been training a lot lately because... I'm teaching these classes online and I have to do all the work alongside um, everyone. And it's been a very humbling experience. If I have to be honest with you, I have been really working my body hard and it's, um, I'm definitely feeling, <laughs> feeling it. And uh, there are times when I'm in it and I'm like, oh, I really want to take a break. Um, but then I know I got to just breathe. I don't want to muscle through it, but I just know that I can do it. Good. Keep going for five, four, three, two, and one. Oh, rest down. Beautiful. Bring your knees in towards your chest. Just stretch your low back. And then as you're ready, come up onto your um, forearms. I'm going to go into a push-up plank this time. And... Um, you can choose what version of plank. This is our last exercise before we stretch. And before we go on to uh, the end of the class, if you can't stay for stretching, that's okay. Um, I'm gonna stay on camera so that I can video for clients and for you guys if you wanna use this at a later time. Um, so I will stay on. All right, find your push-up plank or your forearm position, whatever works for you. Extend your legs in three, two, one, here we go. So if you are in a push-up plank position, create this beautiful connection of your hands into the floor. Press your hands into the floor, really support the shoulders, pull the belly up. Neck is lifted and stacked along the spine. Okay, we got 30 seconds down, 15 to go. Last five, four, three, two, and one. Drop down your knees, press back, child's pose. Give your back and your upper body a little stretch here. Hmm, we are done, guys. I'm super proud of you, thank you. Um, like I said, I'm gonna stay on and stretch a little bit. I'd love for you to stay for about five more minutes or so. All right, so if you're in child's pose, take your fingertips, lift the palm right off the ground so that you're tenting the fingers, walk the hands over to the left side, but don't move the hips. Reach the right arm a little further away and then just give your side body and shoulder a little stretch here. And then walk your hands back through center, tent the fingers, maintain that lift of the 
the palm and then reach over to the right side with the a little bit of emphasis of the left arm reaching about an inch further away. And then come back through center. Good. Let's press up and sit onto our sits bones. Beginning with our butterfly pose. So soles of the feet together. I'm actually going to remove my shoes, a little bit more comfortable that way. And bring the soles of the feet together. Begin to shift the weight side to side. And therefore, you can really connect through the sits bones here. Elbows and knees are remaining wide. The spine is nice and long. Take a deep breath. As you exhale, walk your hands or cradle your toes with your hands. Come into a gentle forward flex position. Just allow your hips to open here. Now, if this does not feel comfortable, reach your feet a little further away and that'll give you a little more space. Just take a few deep breaths here. With each exhale, allow your body to soften. Come down a little deeper in towards the earth. Maybe soften the shoulders. As you're ready, slowly heal yourself up, restock the vertebrae, and come all the way up to seated. Bring the knees together. Extend the legs out long. Sit up tall. So think about this oppositional sensation. The hips draw themselves down to the floor. You're lifted through the upper body. Extend the arms as if you want to reach with your fingertips to the sun. Take an exhale and come into a forward fold position. Soften the shoulders if they're coming up towards your ears. Take a few deep breaths, and as you exhale, melt down towards the earth. And just notice how your low back feels here. Can you maybe draw the tailbone down in opposition? Maybe you notice a little bit more lengthening. And if you don't touch your toes, it doesn't matter. Bring your hands down to your shins, bring your hands down to the sides. As you're ready, walk your hands back through center and just take a moment here. Reestablish, reground in through the sits bones. Take the left leg, bring it in towards your midline. If you feel comfortable, cross it over, lengthen through the right leg. Give your left leg a little hug with your right arm and reach back with your left as you twist. Now pull up through the spine, create the space through the vertebrae here as you twist and turn your gaze back. Now we're gonna unwind, but as you unwind, begin from your tailbone, your mid back, your upper back, your shoulders. Take the left leg, extend it out long, bring the right knee in towards midline, cross it over your left, give your right leg a hug, twist back, turn your gaze beyond the shoulder. Lifting, so if you're rounding through the spine, I want you to grow tall like a tree. And then come back through center, perfect. Alrighty, um, let's come on to our knees, or uh, yeah, let's come on to our knees. <clears throat> We're gonna sit back onto our heels. Oh, this feels good. All right, circle sweep the arms up towards the sky. Now place your pelvis down towards your heels. Feel a little lifting through the, the upper body. Grab the right wrist and lean over to the left. Gently guide the shoulder over without bringing it up towards your ears. So you're still nice and open through the shoulders. Open up through the side body. Keep the pelvis stuck towards the floor. Come back through center, take the left wrist over to the right.
and then come back through center. Swim the hands behind you. Intertwine the fingers. As you intertwine and open, I want you to press up onto your knees. I'm just gonna show you the side view here. Draw the shoulder blades down, lift up through the sternum. If the hands don't connect and you don't have space, bring the hands to your hips. Now, what you want to notice here is if you could pull up through the belly button, lift up through the sternum, and create a little bit of extension here so you're not arching through the low back. Hold this place. Release the hands, come and bring your spine back to neutral, intertwine the fingers, press the palms away from the upper body. Drop the chin down towards the chest. Give the back of your neck a little stretch. And then come back in through center. Good, extend, keep the arms extended. Reach the right hand, uh, the right hand down. Take the left arm and cross it over your midline. Take the right hand and guide the left hand in towards center, stretching the deltoid. And then release, switch sides, bring your right arm across your chest, guide the left, drop the shoulder away from the ear. Good, and release. We're gonna do one more stretch on either side just to stretch our hip flexors. So take your left foot forward, keep seated up on your right knee. Your left knee is gonna stay bent. You are gonna stay nice and lifted. And you're just gonna allow your body to shift forward. And you're gonna allow the right hip to draw down towards the foot. Now, as I'm doing this, I am shifting my toes forward so that if you'll see, you'll notice my, right, um, my left knee is stacked right on top of my left ankle. Hips are square and you're facing forward. Just take a moment here, breathe here, and allow gravity to pull you down towards the earth, just to allow the right hip to open up nice and long. Again, coming back to, if you have a job right now that requires you to sit a lot at a computer, I can imagine that your hips are nice and tight. So this is a great one to just stretch out the hip flexors. Also, a stress holder. <laughs> The psoas muscle holds a lot of tension, holds a lot of stress. So this is a great way to just relieve that. Come back through center, shift and lengthen your left leg, press down through your hips, hands come down to the floor, keep the back lengthened and just shift back. And then come back through center, switch over to the other side. I was gonna turn over to the other side, but I don't need to. Right foot comes forward. Top of the back foot is gonna rest down onto the floor. You're gonna slowly guide your hip forward. Knee stays stacked on the ankle. Let the left hip draw down to the floor. And just take a couple of really nice cleansing breaths here to just release the body down. And then slowly press back, extend the right leg long and then drop down through the hips, toes are up to the sky, back is long. Feel that lengthening through the back of the right leg. and then release, good job. Alrighty, let's sit onto our heels. We're gonna close our workout today with three cleansing breaths, just to release whatever we have left, inhale. And exhale, release. Inhale, breathe in. And exhale, release. Good, last one, breathe in. Bring the palms together, exhale down to heart center, and give yourself a round of applause. You did a great job today, um, super proud of you. I'm super glad you can be with me today. Um, it was uh, a great workout. I'm, I've recorded this, I'm gonna be posting this up online if you wanna have an extra workout in this week. I'll be sending the schedule out for this week's uh, sessions. 
So take a look in your email. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. I can hear you now. So if you turn your audio on, I can hear you. Otherwise, have a great weekend. Thank you, Sharon. Was great. You're you're welcome, Vicky. Thank you guys for coming. Super happy you were here. Yeah, Gaston was here with me too. So. Oh, hi, Gaston. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so happy you were here too. <laughs> great. Well, Bye, good Sharon. job, guys. You're Bye, welcome. Guys. Thanks. Bye. Thank Bye. you for coming. Have a good weekend, guys. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye.